video, opportunity for something like this does not come along very often. One of my viewers built an amp and he came across a sound and goes, send me a clip, goes, what is this? And I go, that is motorboating. Read about it in books, not actually have experienced it, but we sat down and discovered what it was and how to fix it. But I would like to give you uh, an explanation of what motorboating is. There's a lot of confusion out there on the internet. It's not any old hum. It's not any old hiss. It's not just any old uh, problem with the tone stack, so on and so forth. I went back to those folks, back in my archaeological dig into the, you know, the library, and pulled out what they call the Radiotron Designer's Handbook, or probably more familiar to you as a Radio Designer's Handbook. That's kind of what it's called, but this is the proper name, Langford Smith. Uh, publication 1934, last publication 1952. They have a section on what motorboating is and how, what how it's caused, caused and how to solve it. So, the technical definition: it's a parasitic oscillation. That's exactly what it is. It's a fr low frequency that's impressed upon the B plus. Where do you get that? We're going to talk about that just a little bit. The low frequency is set by the power supply transformer impedance and the reservoir capacitor. So go back and calculate based on the reservoir capa capacitor value and the impedance upstream of that, which is in ohms, you can calculate the frequency. It should be very close to the motorboat sound you hear. It's common on power beam tubes such as the Premier Twin 8, that's where we discovered it. Single-ended amps are more prone to this than a, a pair of, or an AB solution, because an AB, you're normally biasing for half of the current that the, that the plate's allowed. On a pentode tube, Depending on what, how you set it up, you could actually push it up a little further. And when you do, you run the risk of possibly getting to a point where the amp will go into motorboat. In that case, what you do is back off the bias just a tad bit. If the tube's rated for 19 watts, bring it down to like 15 watts or less. The dB is going to still be there, but at least the motorboat goes away. The power supply is sagging too much is why. So when you have a, a pento tube, you set the bias up and you're pushing it. As you push uh, your volume into the preamp and e preamp pushes that pento just a little bit too far, pento can't keep up. Uh, power supply is drawing, being asked to draw more current to give to it. And when it does, it can't keep up and keep the voltage level at the power supply. The B plus is same. So it doesn't just go into ripple. It goes into surge. For those of you who probably work in refinery and you've seen compressors go into surge, this is that phenomena in the electrical world. It's trying to, it's trying to deliver voltage, can't make it, deliver voltage, can't do it because it just keeps recovering and that recover cycle, that frequency is the motorboat. Either the power tubes are biased too hot or pulling more current than supply or the, you, you also may have lost the ground. When you lose a ground, especially if you're using a tube rectifier, it goes into surge. And that surge sound is the motorboat. Characteristic. This is very specific. In the book, it says very specifically these characteristics. Diagnosis with a frequent spectrum frequency analyzer will show how the entire frequency is bouncing up and down. I have a video clip I'm going to show you. The DFT analysis will show that it's a square wave and a low frequency. It's a square wave. There's a trigger point that abruptly starts this and then abruptly stops. A characteristic of a motorboat, not a hum issue. This is what the waveform looks like. The, I've captured it. I use software package to do this. Up front here, you'll notice you'll hear some hiss 
and then you're going to hear a couple clicks. The clicks could be a couple things. Either the potentiometer has a wear spot, but they're brand new, so that's probably not it. The clicks are probably RF that has not got to a point where you can hear the radio station. The, the way to treat that is with an R, putting an 820 picofarad on the grid of the power tube. And then the power tube goes in his motorboat, it quits, motorboat quits. So, breaking it down, this is what the viewer is doing. He ramps, as you see at the top, here's the what he was doing with the volume. He ramps up the volume from zero to full volume, and when it hits full, full volume, boom, motorboat. Brings the volume slightly off, it stops. You can hear the 120 hertz hum. He goes back full volume, boom, motorboat, so on and so forth. Allow me to play the click, uh, clip for you. I'm going to move it off this side. I'm going to play it so you can hear. That's what it's doing in the volume. Notice the cursor here. Volume goes down. Volume goes back up. Sounds like something straight out of Star Wars, you know? Some alien creature. But that is what a motorboat sounds like. I'm going to break down that frequency of the motorboat, not the hum or the hiss to either side, but the motorboat sound itself. I'm going to break it down because when you're analyzing this, this is going to look very different than a hiss or a hum that you would find on your oscilloscope and do a frequency analysis. It shows up something different. This is a motorboat. It is a square wave. So I've expanded out uh, a fraction of a second for so a half second for sound analysis. And I stuck it into a discrete Fourier transform software package that I've written to break things down because I need to do signal analysis. And if you put the filters on to make sure that it's not aliasing, it's a separate subject, you'll notice that there's this peak, there's this magnitude at 130 hertz. I, I'm plugged into the house, so the, the hum or, is going to be 120 hertz. So the motorboat is out of phase and it's impressed upon the, the B+. Plus. I'm seeing 130 hertz here on average. So, okay, so the pulse is, and it's a pulse, it's a square wave, 10 hertz. I can calculate that. This is what it looks like when I break that section down a little bit further. I pull the wave apart. It's very characteristic of a square wave. What I like about this is that the the ripples at the top it so a square wave hits and there's a little bit of, it overshoots it comes down a little bit and it quits more interesting at the top when it hits the overshoot you'll see some wave in there that's the 120 hertz hum that's still present in the amp but it, it, it shows up there and then after it overshoots it flattens out the 120 hertz is still into there very little noise on the waveform. So it's not a hiss that we're dealing with. It is a frequency oscillation, that parasitic oscillation. That motorboat has everything to do with the reservoir capacitor and the transformer feeding it. That provides 10 hertz in the calculation. That's the source of the problem there, that oval circuit. So before, when this, the volume isn't up very much, it's a flat response voltage. The ripples is next to nothing on the B+. When it goes in a motorboat, it calculates 11 hertz, by the way, uh, 750 ohms with 20 ohms on a reservoir, 11 hertz. And it gives me that ripple. ripple. Too much sag. What do you do with that? bias the amp down just a tad bit, it all goes away. Other things you could do is that the uh, you'll see this a lot. They'll make that reservoir cap larger. 
what you do, you don't act, you may or may not fix the problem. If you go from a 20 microfarad to a 40 microfarad reservoir cap, fairly common in most amps, it changes the frequency. It stores more energy so that if it's approaching that motorboat, if it's approaching sagging on the filament winding for the transformer, it it would decreases the ripple, decreases the chance of that happening. The problem with that is the tube, for tube rectifiers, not diode rectifier, but tube rectifier, the manufacturer clearly states the safe operating zone for this particular amp is 20 microfarads. Put the 20 microfarads in. If they had said 40, I would have gone with 40. If I still had motor boating at that point, I would just back off the bias. Again, you don't have to buy back the bias off a much. Just bring it down a few millivolts, a few milliamps. Bring it down from, if you're operating at 19 watts, full anode plate dissipation. Think about bringing it down to 15, or in this case, it really should have been set to 10 to begin with. That's all there is for motor boating. I hope you like it. I'm going to play that that wave just one more time for you so you can see it in uh, real time and then thanks for watching i hope you found this useful